In this video, we'll see how a UFT exactly works. Now, UFT works exactly on the object properties and values. Now, what is object, what is properties and what is values? So, UFT behaves exactly like what human being does is. Now, for example, I've taken this uh, remote in my hand. Okay. Now, if I ask you to understand three properties of this remote, for example, the properties would be the color of the remote, the height of the remote and the width of the remote. So these are three properties of this remote. Okay. So now if I say, tell me the values of this properties, tell me the color, the color would be black. What is the height? Height would be as let's say eight centimeter. The width would be, let's say two centimeter. So these are like prop values of this object now. Okay. So what are the values? The black is the value. Eight centimeter is the value. Two centimeter is the value. What are the properties? Color, height and width. These are the properties and values. So when I show you this remote, what you do is you collect all the information about this remote in your brain itself. Okay. So you store it somewhere. Now, if I keep my remote here and if I bring back again, so if I ask you the same question, what you'll do is you will recollect everything from your brain and you'll try to tell me the object properties and values and you will recognize the object easily. So if I give you three, four remotes of white color, blue color, so you'll understand this is the black color remote, which I've already learned. So same way UFT works. Now how UFT works. So it collects all the object properties and values and store it in its brain. So it doesn't store the actual objects. I cannot store the actual object in my brain, but I can store the reference. Okay. The reference means the description of what the object, the properties, the values of the object I can store in my brain. So whatever you store in your brain, same UFT do, uh, does it, it stores object properties and values inside its brain. The name of the brain is nothing but object repository. Object repository is collection of all the objects, its properties and its values. So the next time when it sees the actual object, it can see and it can verify that. Okay. So let us see that I have recorded a script, which was in the previous videos. If I want to see where are the objects, its properties and values been captured. Okay. So for example, this is the object. Okay. That's a username. Few object properties would be captured. Let's say height, width, enabled property, focused property, X width, Y width, or you can say X coordinate, Y coordinate. So these properties are been captured at some location. That's an object repository. Okay. So I'll, I'll show you where is the object repository. You have to go to this resources and this is option as object repository and there's an option as control R. So you'll get this dialog box that is object repository. And in that object repository, if you see, I have this test objects. So test objects, remember, these are reference of the objects. It will store the properties and values of the object. It will not store the actual object in your brain. It will not store the actual agent name in its object repository, but it will store, let's say if I click on this agent name, it will store the properties. You can see that's a description properties and these are the values given. What is the description properties? That is dev name given, dev name. And what is the prop value is given as agent name. If I click on this password, if see this dev name and that's a password, I can also ask him to remember the height, width, enabled, focused, X coordinate, Y coordinate, and so on. I can ask him to remember those properties. That is a separate setting then. But remember the test object means these are the reference given. Okay. They are reference are stored inside the brain of UFT. That's a test object repository. And this is known as test objects. Okay. So if you, if I click on this OK button, it says the name is OK. These are the object properties. The class is WPF button. It belongs to windows presentation foundation. Okay. WPF and the repository is local. There are two types of repository, a local repository and shared repository. We have separate videos for that. And these are the test object details. There are separate details given. So if I click on OK button, it says it is a WPF button. That's a class. The name is the text is OK. And the development name is nothing but OK button. So these are some properties given here. So remember, these are the test objects. So how does QTP work? Again, I'll say as the reference object or the test objects are being matched with the real time objects. Real time objects means that's a real time objects. For him, the UFT, what is the real time objects? Sample application, which is a flight application. So I'll just show you the sample application. Yeah, this is the sample application. This flight GUI is nothing but an object. Okay, this is these are all the objects, username, password, OK button. These are different objects. Now, these objects are known as runtime objects. This object is known as runtime object. The object's reference which is stored in my brain, that is nothing but test objects. 
reference stored in object repository are known as test objects. This is a runtime objects. This is a runtime objects. When, when my test objects are same as runtime objects, it will pass. Any one value, if it is wrong, let's say width is wrong, height is wrong or the color is wrong. Any one property, if it is wrong, it will give me the result as fail itself. Okay. So that is nothing but a runtime object and the test objects are stored inside the uh, object repository. So I hope you are able to understand what is the object repository, what is the uh, test object and runtime object and how does a UFT work into real time. That's all for this video.